Okay. Oh. Thank you very much, Phil. And congratulations on more than two years of effort going back to August of 2008. My name is Webster Tarpley. You can follow me at tarpley.net. I have been actively opposing Obama since the first days of January 2008. I saw that Obama, like Jimmy Carter before him, was a Wall Street puppet, specifically a puppet of the Trilateral Commission and related groups. I therefore posted essays on the internet. My first book, Obama, the Postmodern Coup, was published well in advance of the 2008 Pennsylvania presidential primary. My second book, Barack H. Obama, the Unauthorized Biography, was published in August 2008, three months before the general election. Tragically, these books, written before the fact, are now, in retrospect, a compendium of the disasters of the Obama years so far. In that same month of August 2008, I had the honor of being with Phil Berg on the other side of the building at the Supreme Court when Phil Berg filed the first legal action attempting to expose Obama's lack of qualification for the presidency. Three years ago in this space, there was an anti-war demonstration calling to get the U.S. troops out of Iraq, out of Afghanistan. It called for the impeachment of Bush and Cheney because they violated the Constitution. Obama successfully functioned as the grave diggers for those movements, which now no longer exist. And this is an essential part of his task. There are many valid reasons for opposing Obama. Mine may be different from those of some of you. Mine are those of an American system traditionalist, not a modern reactionary, but of a New Deal Democrat. You were told that Obama was the new Franklin D. Roosevelt. He is not. He is the anti-Franklin D. Roosevelt. He's the opposite of whatever the New Deal ever stood for, and I'll prove it to you in detail. In 2008, I was a Puma Democrat, the anti-Obama opposition inside the Democratic Party. Having studied Obama, I would say to all of you, it is important to attack Obama for what he actually does, not for what he says, for his actions, not his rhetoric. The reason is that Obama operates through duplicity, deception, and deceit. The things he says are generally lies designed to neutralize his own base in the Democratic Party. He talks progressive, but he acts Wall Street. Obama ran as a peace candidate, at least regarding Iraq. But in reality, Obama is a warmonger. He is a bigger and more clever warmonger than any neocon. During his presidency, Obama has almost always had more combat troops engaged in the field, in Iraq and Afghanistan, and now elsewhere, more combat troops in the field than Bush and Cheney ever did. The Iraq war, despite what you've been told, goes on. The Afghan war grows more and more tragic and pointless every week. And now, Obama has given us a third war, a whole new war, this time with Pakistan, a very large country with six times the population of Iraq. And this is a country that really does have nuclear weapons. In addition, Obama could order an attack on Iran at any time, something that would most probably lead to a new world war somewhat further down the line. There are now US military operations in Yemen Somalia, and in virtually all of the countries surrounding Iran. And yet, 
Obama has successfully neutralized and destroyed the peace movement that once protested against these things. Far from being a friend of organized labor, Obama is a union buster. He cynically drove General Motors and Chrysler into bankruptcy. He then extorted billions of dollars from the pension funds of the United Auto Workers, which were transferred directly to Wall Street zombie banks in exchange for dubious pieces of paper, stock certificates in Chrysler and General Motors. What they will be worth in a year or two is anybody's guess. The United Auto Workers, once the flagship of US militant industrial unionism, has had to accept wages and benefits at the same wretched level as the open shops in the so-called right-to-work states, mainly in the South, where there are no unions. Most dramatically, Obama's Race to the Top program aims at destroying the most important public sector unions, the American Federation of Teachers and the National Education Association. As usual, this is done under left cover. In this case, under the slogan of school reform. Teachers are being vilified, fired, now? denied tenure, subjected to merit pay, even as hundreds of public schools are shut down. Obama's Secretary of Education, Arne Duncan, has been leading the charge, along with the unlamented Michelle Rhee, the now outgoing schools chancellor here in the District of Columbia. Obama learned this trade as his family business. His mother worked for the union-busting Ford Foundation. Obama himself was employed by the Chicago Annenberg Challenge, an attempt to bust the Chicago Teachers Union, which failed. He's also worked for the Joyce Foundation, the Woods Fund, the Gamaliel Foundation. His business is in the area of foundations, the main means of social control by Wall Street elites over the population of the United States. What is the goal of this operation? It is to destroy free, universal, compulsory quality public education as we have known it in this country since the time of the Northwest Ordinance of 1788 and the days of Horace Mann. Under his deceptive left cover, Obama is more of a dictator than Bush ever was. It's Obama who openly claims the right to assassinate, to slaughter American citizens if they happen to be outside of the country. Under Obama, we have renditions. In plain English, those are kidnappings. We have black sites, secret CIA prisons. We have torture. We have the Guantanamo concentration camp, all still going strong with no organized protest because Obama has neutralized it. Most of all, Obama has been a tool of the banks and the financiers. Early in his term in the White House, Obama invited the leading zombie bankers to the Oval Office and told them that he was the only thing standing between them and the populist pitchforks of Americans enraged about the trillion dollar bank bailout. This is how Obama sees himself. His self-image is that of a protector of Wall Street against mass protests. This is why he takes the shoves of the pitchfork. He gets in between. Obama's concept of the Democratic Party is to become a shield to the bankers and to be destroyed in the process. If Republicans are put to the test, we see what they're really made of. Anytime any Democrat attacks Wall Street, the Republicans line up to defend their real masters. But if the Democrats do the bidding of Wall Street, the Republicans go to the sidelines and attack what's going on and call it socialism. In reality, it's Wall Street that's calling the shots. Obama has confirmed helicopter Ben Bernanke at the Federal Reserve despite Bernanke's colossal responsibility for the world derivatives panic of September 2008. Obama has given more power to the Federal Reserve and has fended off all attempts to nationalize or to reform 
the Fed. 